Hello community, today we're gonna do the parametric UMAP, the fast and furious run. So here we go, run time and run everything, beautiful. So we start with TensorFlow, we are operating on a Colab notebook, so of course we have TensorFlow installed. I hope to get a GPU, yes, backend GPU initializing, yes, connected, we have a GPU, that's great. So we have TensorFlow probability version dot 16. We have in the 22 uh, upgrade our Python library gym. Then we do all the NumPy, SciPy, our, where is it? Panda, scikit-learn, data shader, whole of use on number because it's now running especially focused on number. And then if we have installed everything, we have here the final command, pip install umap learn and I'll include also the plot functionality. So we have to do nothing about whatever the plot is there. So this is successfully installed it. Yes, UMAP learn 0.5.3. Great. So we have our standard TensorFlow Keras data set, MNIST, you remember? Those are our 70,028 20, times 28 black and white images. So our dimension is 784. And then we simply have the train images. We have 60,000 train images. 28 times 28 times 1 is the dimensionality. And then for the test images, we have 10,000 test images. And here we go. We just import parametric UMAP with one line of code. Import parametric UMAP. And then, if you have seen my theory video on... Oh, wait, wait a second. Yeah, of course, you cannot go on with this. Just have to start the neural network. Yes, here we go. This is what I want to show you. Yes, come on. No problem at all. Um, the parameters to parametric UMAP. You have a lot of parameters. We are going for the default version, but I just want to show you what default means so that you know where to start to tune. At first, the optimizer. Typical Keras optimizer would be an Atom optimizer. Choose whatever to your liking. We have a batch size. We have to define depending on your RAM. You have the dimension. Of course, we have 28 times 28 times uh, 1. If you go for other images, 32, 32, 2, and 3 color channels, then we have an encoder. Remember, we're working in TensorFlow with Keras. We have a sequential model and we have a decoder. The encoder goes from the high dimensional data space to the embedding space, and the decoder goes the other way around. It goes to as a reconstruct. And it goes from the low dimensional embedding space back to the high dimensional data space, the, our input data space. Then we have some parametric embedding. I hope this is set to true, but the parametric reconstruction, so this means the inverse functionality is set to false for the moment because we go for the minimal version. So the reconstruction loss is of course Boolean. It is a binary cross entropy and the loss weight is set normally to one. Now this this would be the turbo version of our little car, of our little Volkswagen. Uh, the autoencoder, if you combine UMAP with uh, autoencoder functionality, we remember that the, uh, the autoencoder itself is a dimensionality restriction. We would get even better performance, but for the moment we set, set it to no, false. Reconstruction validation, yes, we will do this in a later video. The last report frequency is, we say, one time per epoch. The training epochs we set. The global correlation loss weight. And eagerly, yes, there was a TensorFlow 1, but we forgot about this. And just that you know, here, our encoder and decoder network, they are default. And if in parametric UMAP you use the default, what we're going to do in a second, we have the default is a three-layer, 100-neuron, fully connected neural network. And here you have it. This is our default encoder. You're not going to see because it is done behind the scenes. For you, you have our three-layer fully connected 100 neuron neural network. Now for the decoder that goes for the embedding space back to the data space, we have now, if a parametric construction is activated, we have a decoder that is also a TensorFlow 2 carrier sequential model. Same structure, same activation function, ReLo, you know everything, standard class. Now we say, this is the line more or less where we say, 
our parametric UMAP and all the parameters. And from all the parameters I just showed you here, all of this, we just say, let's go with default. We just have to say the number of epochs is 50 and we want to see the progress in the calculation. And you see after three minutes, it's done the embedded did our fit transform on the train images. Uh, it started, the first step of course was construct from a data cloud in a high dimensional vector space to construct a fuzzy simplicial set. You know, we love topology here. So go and read what is a simplicial set and about the fuzzy and how you can compute. Yeah, yeah, this is, look at my theory video. And then we is gonna build our, uh, where we are, where we are, the nearest neighbors network. We have 17 trees, we have an iteration, and then we gonna construct the embedding on neural network and it is already done after three minutes. Oh yeah, I have to do the, and let's have a look at the loss function. And here we look at the cross entropy over the number of epochs. We had 10. So you can imagine if we increase now the number of epochs to 200. Let's start it right now. Let's go back. So you see that beautiful, that cross entropy against epoch is going down beautifully, exactly as we expected. So this means for the simple uh, visualization that our MNIST uh, data set from the digits from zero to nine, where we have 60,000 images in black and white, 28 times 28 pixels, UMAP in our TensorFlow embedding is beautifully able to separate those 10 classes, those 10 digits. And this is more or less mission achieved. But if you want to see, because this is, of course, you remember in theory, I showed you, uh, the step two after you construct a fuzzy simplicial set, then you have to do in the um, parametric UMAP, you have now your neural network functionality. And then of course you have an initial start um, set in the embedding space, but the more you train it, the more you optimize your cross entropy, your loss function, the better the result will be if you compute uh, for the minimal difference between the uh, probability distribution in the original vector space and the probability distribution in the embedding space. Both topological spaces, you know, Bernoulli equation, cross entropy, I explained everything in my theory video. So now, if we do run this, oh yeah, this takes definitely longer. The first did just take 14 seconds. And now we are running here close to a minute, 59 seconds. Okay. So this would be 10 minutes if we do now a real, if you try to improve our performance, not by leaving our default uh, configuration, our default parameters, but just by increasing the number of epochs, we try to increase our uh, accuracy, if you want, of the model. And then what we do, more or less, we do the same. We want to see. If we plot now, this is exactly where we calculate now our embeddings and we want to see our uh, classes, our 10 classes, if we plot the embedding, if they are clearly separable in a two-dimensional visualization. So we go from, where is it, where is it, where is it? We have here a 784, if you want uh, dimensionality on this axis, and we go down to two. And this is exactly where parametric UMAP is going to help us. And as you can see, also with number of epochs was 50, we have some beautiful results already, but we have now the run for the number of epochs 200, takes a little bit of time. What can we do? Anything else? Yes, we have three lines of code we can still do. So saving and loading. Yeah, of course. Uh, it, if you want to save this, it's not so easy as with UMAP because remember, you can unsave it simply by, by pickling a UMAP object because you have a Keras network living inside of this little buddy. So therefore there is to save now this uh, parametric UMAP model that you trained on and you want to reuse it, the model later, maybe retrain it again. There's a built-in function that tells you to do exactly this. So you have here from our parametric UMAP, you have import load parametric UMAP, unbelievable. 
So our embeddings, our embedder, you just save and you'll give it a path. And then you have this beautiful load parametric umap command and a path. And the embedder will be reloaded. Your embeddings will be reloaded and everything will be available for you to go on and do whatever you want. Because remember, one of the beautiful things of parametric UMAP compared to the simple, well, simple under quotation mark UMAP was that with this neural network functionality, if you have new data points, it is easy to find and very fast to find embeddings for it. So we are here, a number of epochs is 4 of 10. I would say I'll be back with you in a second. And for me, it's going to be about six minutes time. And what felt about 100,000 years. So we finally finished our Colab GPU, finished doing the job. We have now the embedding calculated. And if we do now plot our embeddings, you can see three, 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 six, one, two, three, four. We have our 10 classes again. Uh, I don't know if the um, increase in accuracy is so much better or whether the old one looked perfect to me. Three, three, and four. So whatever we have, the number of epochs increased and we receive a beautiful uh, result. As I showed you, showed you, we have here this load command. So, oh gee, we got a, a warning. We compiled the loaded model, but it has yet to be built. Will be empty, model to be saved to, temporary model encoder. You have the parametric model warning, uh, yes, to no training configuration was in the save files, was not compiled manually. Yes, beautifully. And then we just load it up and it says, yes, pickle loader, yes, TensorFlow, no warning was found in the film, was not compiled, compiled manually. Yes, loaded, loaded. So I showed you that we can define our encoder and our decoder uh, network, neural network with TensorFlow Keras sequential. And just as a sneak preview to my next video, since we are doing here a vision job, we have, of course, a convolutional network. And this will be the layout of the type that we use as an encoder and a decoder in our next example, where I show you how to tune parametric UMAP to have a performance like a Ferrari. This was it for today. I say thank you and I see you in the next video.